So up until this point, we've talked a lot about uh, designing high-level state machines and how high-level state machines worked, uh, what their differences are between the finite state machines that we've seen in earlier sections of this course. Now we're going to shift and talk about how do we implement these high-level state machines. I've already tried to get you to think about this a little bit, um, but we're going to dig into it in a lot more detail now for the remaining uh, uh, section of this course. So recall from one of my previous videos and from of our some of our previous class exercises that we saw this pulse counter high-level state machine. This is a Mealy state machine, right? We can see that. And then we also discussed the circuit for this machine it might look something like this, where the state machine itself acts as a controller of a register called count, which is our variable within this high-level state machine. Now, this works pretty well, but there's kind of a, a gap here in terms of details. This count down here looks like a register, but there's a little bit more involved than just a register here. You see I've got subtraction going on. That implies that I need some kind of a subtractor. I've got um, equals going on, so comparisons, which implies that I need some sort of comparator. Um, so that implies that there's a, actually a little bit more going on here than just a single register being manipulated by the state machine. In fact, this box down here with count on it is really what we call a data path. So it's going to represent how data flows into and perhaps even out of our state machine. And so the Zybook goes through many, many, many examples of what data paths look like. They're going to contain things like load registers, uh, comparators, adders, as well as uh, multiplexers. I wanted to take a few minutes and walk you through uh, what the data path for this particular uh, circuit might look like. So again, consider what we have here. I know that I need to read in an outside value n. I know that I need to do some subtraction. I know I, that I need to do some comparisons, and I also need to be able to load this thing. Um, so let's take a look at the data path. I actually created this data path using the uh, data path creator in Zybook, which is in section uh, 5.6, uh, I believe. And so here's the data path that I came up with. So we see the register right here, right in the middle. So this is our register that's going to store the value of count for us, right? Um, let's work our way back up to the top and take a look at what goes into this particular register. You see that I have a value of zero here as one potential option. Um, actually, I take that back. This is not the value zero. This is meant to represent our variable n. Um, so the Zybook, uh, the Zybook um, site was not quite flexible enough to allow me to rename this value. But I intend for this value to be the n value that we see coming into this uh, uh, register over here on this high level diagram. On the other side, we have an adder. You can see that the adder is hooked up to the register as one input and then minus one as another input. So that's going to be taking care of this count equals count minus one piece that might take place. And then we need to decide, are we going to be loading in this or are we going to be loading in, are we going to be loading in n or are we going to be loading in count minus one? Those are really our two options, right? Or we can leave count be the same. So in order to do that, our state machine is going to have to, to manipulate the select bit of this multiplexer. You see I've got n going into one side of the multiplexer. I've got count minus 1 going into the other side of the multiplexer. So the state machine will manipulate the select bit of this multiplexer. It will also then manipulate the load signal for this load register. If I need to load in n or count minus 1, this load signal needs to be high. If I just want to keep count the same, if I don't need to change it for whatever reason, then I want this load signal to be low. And then finally, as an output of this data path, we see I have a comparator hooked up to this load register to the value 0. So I want to see if this register is equal to the value 0. And that's going to lead us to our output, which in this case rep is represented by this right here. You see it's going back into the state machine so that the state machine can use that output to determine what this event output should be. So this is the data path side. This is what's inside of this blue box. You see that I've got n as an input. That's up here at the top. And then I've got some control signals, the load control signal, as well as a signal to choose whether or not it should be doing subtraction. right? So this represents the select bit of the multiplexer. 
This represents the load signal of my load register, right? And then I have an output down here, which is going to be fed back into the state machine so that it can make a decision uh, about what to do given that particular output. This reinforces this idea that when we create high-level state machines, we've got two pieces. We've got a data path, which is what we're looking at now, and then the state machine itself, which we call a controller. We're going to take a lot, uh, we're going to spend some more time um, talking about this distinction of controllers and data paths in the upcoming sections.